unboxing the Razer Cobra Pro. If you wanna check out this mouse, there's Amazon links below, but let's get this unboxed. They have a nice little pull tab right here. Looks like basically all of your other packaging from Razer, but it's on brand and we like that. Okay, we can't quite pull it up. Wish that worked a little bit better. Oh no, this is for the top lid, I guess? I don't know. But let's get right into this. This looks like basically every other Razer mouse unboxing, which is a good thing. Now on the bottom here, we've got some paperwork and a Razer stickers, some Razer for gamers, by gamers, and some RGB chroma stickers if you want to brand your room. But let's get to the mouse itself. Popping that out, taking off that plastic, and there we go, the Razer Cobra. So as we can see here, this is very Vipery. This basically looks like a Viper 2.0. Now it's rumored that this mouse is actually replacing the Viper, uh, which makes sense because it looks extremely similar and in the hand it feels pretty dang like a, a Viper. I don't know why they removed that nameplate, but let's take the plastic off. Oh, and that even goes into the top, that's nice. So you can see we have the glossy accents just like we had on the Viper. Overall, a very good looking mouse. This is injection molded and it has a grippy texture, it's similar to what we saw in the Razer Basilisk, and I love this. This feels fantastic. This feels like a very premium mouse. Let's test the side buttons. Ooh, that is really good, wow. They have some resistance to them, which you want on side buttons and there is zero throw. That is immediate clicks. That is super nice. I mean, you can see there's basically no travel there. Wow, that's impressive. The clicks, exactly what we expect from Razer. Not as good as BenQ in my opinion, and not as good as the G Pro X Super Lite 2, which was fantastic, phenomenal. We then have two buttons here. We've typically seen one button there, but we have two, an up and a down button. The scroll wheel feels pretty good. It's nice and tactile, it's not mushy but it's not super tactile. We've seen that. I think the previous generation Viper had that very, very nice tactile bumps and it's a little bit low. I would prefer to have the wheel a little bit higher, but not a big deal. The click of the scroll wheel feels nice. And we can see here again, just like the Pulsar X2H, we're copying the Logitech G Pro X Superlite in this design. That's definitely from the G Pro X Superlite, which is a good thing because I do believe that this causes less drag, but we'll have to see. Again, all the corners are rounded here, which is good. The corners are rounded here, which typically, hopefully causes less drag. We then have a turnable little spot for our USB dongle, which is not in there when you open it up. And also looks like some charging points, maybe? Or is that just a magnet? We'll have to see about that. Now in the box, we've got a USB type C to USB type A extender. If you do wanna add this to your cable so that you have extra length between your dongle and your mouse, so that's nice to have. I do not believe that this is the 8,000 Hertz dongle that you need, but you can buy that separately, I believe. And then in the bottom, we have a ultralight cable from Razer, pretty standard. It's branded Razer, it's USB type C, it's a lightweight cable. I always love how they do the smoky covers. It doesn't add anything, but it's just cool. Yeah, overall, this one does feel stiffer. Yeah, that's actually very interesting. This doesn't feel like the Speed Flex cable. Um, I'm not sure if it is, but it does feel stiffer for sure than the Pulsar X2H, which I just unboxed. So that's why I'm comparing them. They're also right in the same segment. So that makes sense to compare them. Here is the Pulsar X2's cable. We're gonna get the same point. And you can see this one was just unboxed as well. And look at how flowy that is. Look at this one. It's not flowy. It's still not releasing that even when pulling it. I mean, look at that. It's still keeping it. This is a stiffer cable and I don't know really why. It does not feel like their Speedflex cable. Very interesting, but with that, let's get to the full review. The Razer Cobra Pro coming in at a price tag of $129.99. Now, even though its list price is $129.99, it's pretty consistently been on sale for around $110 so it makes it a little bit easier to stomach. Now the sensor here uses Razer's Focus Pro 30K optical sensor. This hits a 1000 Hertz pulling rate, but it's compatible with Razer's 8000 Hertz pulling rate dongle that you do have to buy separately. So if you do wanna get that, you can, which is cool. This does up to 30,000 DPI, 750 IPS, and 70 Gs of acceleration. So overall, a top-notch sensor. But now let's talk build quality. This is very reminiscent of the Razer Basilisk V3, which is a good thing because I really, really like that. This is an extremely solid build. It has those injection molded side rubber grips that are super, super nice to feel. Glossy accents throughout, very Viper reminiscent, and it has beautifully incorporated RGB. Now, this is a smaller, thinner mouse with a much more flat and mild palm bump. Since the shape is smaller and lower profile, this is best for small to medium hands. 
but you have large hands, I really just would not recommend this mouse at all. For skates here, these are 100% PTFE. This has one skate on the top, one around the sensor, and then one on the bottom. The glide here is very smooth and more controlled due to the weight. Stopping power is also great here. If you're whipping fast movements to quick stops, this is really, really good. However, it is a little bit more cumbersome as this mouse is heavier overall. Now for connectivity and battery, obviously this is wireless. You can use this with a 2.4 gigahertz USB dongle or Bluetooth. It charges via USB-C and for battery life, without RGB, you get that around 100 hours of claimed time, and that's what we tested as well. But with that RGB on, it's only 25 hours. So if you're gonna leave the RGB on, which, I mean, let's be real, it's cool enough that you probably want to just have that USB-C somewhere cable managed on your desk so that you can plug it in you know, every two days or so. That's so that you never ever have it die during a gaming session though. Now for switches, these are using Razer's Gen 3 optical switches. Now they feel a little bit heavier here when compared to the Death Adder V3. And while these are the same switches, so they have all the same specs, I think the reason that these feel heavier here is the overall smaller left and right click button. So you get a little bit less leverage and they do feel a little bit heavier. Again, all up to personal preference. It's not a good thing or a bad thing. It just is a thing. Now, these switches, I like. I love them. However, really in the recent last year, some switches on mice have gotten absolutely phenomenal. So these aren't as good as they used to feel. Now, for the two extra side buttons on the left, the feel is really good here but the placement just isn't as great for my thumb. You also get two extra buttons behind the scroll wheel. One's kind of like an up and one kind of a, a down. And I really, really like that. You can change the DPI very easily on the fly with that and much better than basically any other mouse I've used for changing the DPI with those buttons specifically really good. Now the scroll wheel here is way less vague than the Death Adder V3 Pro. The spacing is a little bit closer than what I prefer, but it does have nice tactility. Now for weight here at 77 gram, that's not quite a lightweight mouse, but it does give you a lot more control. So if you do play slower paced, but still fast paced games, maybe like Insurgency Sandstorm, Hell Let Loose, this is still gonna be a great mouse for those games. And you can still absolutely do FPS gaming, especially if you have a higher DPI. But if your play style is a lot of really quick whips, this does get a little bit cumbersome after long sessions. But again, definitely slower and more controlled mouse. Again, if you wanna check out these exact same product, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and internet national links. And if you want to check out my main channel with longer form content, you can check that out right here. But this is a consumer tech review high speed and I'll see you guys in the next video.